I'm Al from elbowpepper.com. If you haven't seen the intro, you can watch that first, talking more about why I'm doing this. But briefly, we're looking at my own self-reliant, fully sustainable mix that I can use for seed starting, particularly in a situation where nothing else is available to me. If all retail and commercial supply lines have been shut down, this is something that I could turn to to still be able to start seedlings in the winter. So let's look at how things were progressing a little over a week through this experiment. First of all, I want to note that I did get germination in all the different mixtures, but there was a delay of several days with the leaves mixed with worm castings. Only that one was behind in germinating. They did end up sprouting and doing okay. The one that did the worst though was definitely those bean pods. Mixing those things in, those dried husks of the bean pod, they created some kind of a major deficiency and caused those seedlings to struggle. Eventually, I even lost one. Early on, it was looking like the pine needles mixed with castings could do pretty good. And it was doing just about as good as the pure worm castings. That's right. 100% worm castings, those were doing the best. I was getting the best growth and the healthiest plants. Now, as we skip ahead a couple of weeks coming towards the conclusion, it was becoming obvious as to which one the winner was going to be. And at this point, none of the mixtures were showing any promise anymore. Something was going on with these things that was making it so that the nutrients weren't doing their job. Before we talk about what probably the biggest factor was, why don't I lay these out and we can, under some nice natural lighting, be able to see how they all look after having had a month to be able to grow. Here's the lineup from what's pretty much the worst to the best. Let's zoom in and check these out. Look at how bad this one is. This was just pods that were mixed in. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. This was with that grape bark and uh, we didn't really get much plant vigor there. This was the bark mixed with leaves. Then the leaves mixed with the pine needles, we had a little bit more growth, but already hitting some limitations here. The bark with the pine needles, you had uh, a little bit of a bigger plant, but not really liking it that much. The leaves and the bean pods weren't all too bad. And the actual leaves, which was the one that took the longest to germinate, once it got going, uh, it's not looking that horrible. Now, here's the one with just the pine needles, and at first, at first it was looking really good, but now we have some problems setting in here. But the control, just those pure worm castings, well, definitely, hands down, this is the winner. Best growth, best results, able to support two full plants, and maybe the others would have too, if it weren't for whatever those issues were with the growth, with the nutrients. Let's take a second and talk about what might have really been the biggest culprit in this situation here. What I think is your biggest issue in all of these setups here comes down to a little something known as nitrogen draft. Nitrogen draft occurs whenever you have materials that are tied up in soil or in this case in some kind of a mix and those materials begin to go through a decomposition process. Now if those materials are very high in carbon but don't have much nitrogen in them for that decomposition that bacterial breakdown to occur those bacteria need a certain amount of nitrogen and if it's available in the surrounding materials they'll draw they'll pull it from those materials, pine needles, dried leaves, bark, even those bean pods, those are all high carbon, 
low nitrogen in their composition. And the worm castings, clearly, they do have an adequate amount of nitrogen, at least the ones that I have, to be able to put forth good plant growth. But that nitrogen, due to nitrogen draft, when it gets tied up in those decomposing materials, at that point, it is now no longer available for the plants to be able to use it and to be able to get the minerals that they need. So the question is, what about the control? What about just pure worm castings? Was that even good enough? Well, from what I observed, these plants grew just fine. I was able to see some good water absorption and retention using these worm castings. They were able to draw up to wick up some water when they were watered from below. And um, meanwhile, they were able to hold on to any any nutrients in them. If I were to take a container of water, drop that down in, let it soak for 15 minutes, there, the water remained perfectly clear. No nutrients were being leached out into the water. It all stayed bound inside of those castings and ready for the plants to be able to absorb. So I think that in a pinch, I could just use these. Now, of course, not all worm castings are made the same you have to think about what those worms are being fed and what type of an environment they're being raised in. If they're being kept in an environment where they're basically sitting in their own juices, and if they're being fed like maybe animal products, manures, things that are very high in salts, you may get dramatically different results, especially if you're using pure worm castings. So if you're going to try anything, do a small scale test, do something like this, using whatever you have, it might be completely different materials, but do a small scale test and uh, see what kind of results you get and then go from there. Another thing to keep in mind is I'm only testing one type of plant. If I were to do lettuce, if I were to do peppers, how would they respond? See, that's the basis for additional testing. And before I would do this on a massive scale, maybe put all my energies into all my summer seedlings into using one method, I want to know that I've tested that method thoroughly. But this shows me some promising results and it provides the basis for further testing, which I am going to be doing. And in fact, why don't I just tell you real fast what my next follow-up experiment is going to be. What I have here is some finely sifted compost that I made in my tumbler. And so with this stuff, I now have another nutrient source and I want to now compare this to worm castings. And for a baseline comparison, this next experiment will also have one of these just so I can compare and see how this is doing in relation to a conventional retail bagged seed starting mix, just for comparison. But I think I'll probably try lettuce, which will now give me another plant sampling in that next experiment. So it's going to be several weeks before I've actually conducted and concluded those results and put them out in a video for you. I really appreciated those of you on the channel that were supportive and even came up with some guesses as to how things would turn out. I think it makes it pretty fun. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, Happy gardening.